Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Rostenberg again from beyondmthfr.com. This video is the final video in the How Homocysteine Harms the Brain series relating MTHFR and homocysteine. And what I want to start with today is giving you some information about how to figure out if someone has a problem just by looking at them. As a, as a doctor, a chiropractor, working in my clinic on a daily basis, I see people, touch patients, I spend a lot of time looking at people, and certain patterns begin to emerge. I want to share these two case studies with you. I'm sorry if you have an aversion to feet, but uh, these are good examples of brain problems that show up on the outside of the body. On the top part of your screen here, you're looking at the feet of a 75 year old male with a history of multiple, multiple uh, transient ischemic attacks, many strokes. Um, his chief complaint, uh, mainly re related to me by his wife, uh, is that of confusion, memory loss, and balance. They literally had to carry this individual into my office where after treatment he was able to walk out. But uh, during the exam, you can see how just how dry and cracked his feet are. Now, I, these these photos really don't do it justice, but these are some of the driest uh, skin and driest feet that I have ever seen. On the bottom of your screen is another individual, a 62-year-old male with a history of basically head and neck injuries. Um, this individual is now disabled and due to the effects of some form of Parkinson's like dementia and what I want to um, chronic you know traumatic encephalitis is another uh, issue this gentleman has dealt with but look at his toes now the only way your toes can turn that color and change is that the circulation has been removed is is inhibited there is no circulation going on in these toes certainly not enough to allow the immune system to do its job and so what you notice is if you can look at the feet, you're getting a preview of what's going on in the brain. And the reason why is the feet are like the tip of a leaf. And when a leaf is a plant is stressed or there's a problem with the nutrition of the plant, the plant gets dry from the tip of the leaf. And then it works towards the, the trunk or the stem. And it's the same with our body. If you see dryness or changes in the toes, and again, he has very dry skin in his feet as well. What that means is, is that there is not enough essential fats in this individual's body. The same is true for both of these people. So the reason I'm showing you these slides of the feet is when you see really dry feet, cracked, lack of moisture, it's a omega-3 and essential fatty acid problem. And you can take it to the bank that if you see this kind of a problem on the feet, you also have that problem in the brain. These two individuals happen to both have established neurological deterioration, neurological problems, and they also have very, very dry, cracked feet. This uh, person here on the bottom with the toenail fungus, where there is no circulation, there's low oxygen, and yeast grows, fungus grows in the absence of oxygen. This is how we make alcohol. We put sugars in a barrel and seal off all the light and the air and the sugars turn it in the yeast turns it into alcohol so this is a well-known process and the reason I'm talking about this guy's toenails is when the toenails are this um, sort of deteriorated due to fungus you know that there's been poor circulation in his toes and you know there's been poor circulation in his brain so these are two things to pay attention to when you look at yourself and neighbors and friends when you're out at the barbecue this summer. Just, hey, take a look at their feet. It will tell you a lot about their brain. This is a review slide from the last two videos talking about the homocysteine bell curve. The point of this slide is just to illustrate that health is all about balance. On the left side and the right side, we have imbalance, we have disease, we have uh, you know loss of function. The rest of this slideshow is really going to talk about the high homocysteine phenotype, the high homocysteine person. In our society, we are much more likely with our high rates of diabetes and heart disease and metabolic syndrome and overconsumption, eating fast food and things like that, to have high homocysteine than we are to have low. So we're kind of over here on the high homocysteine side, methylation 
pathways are screwed up because uh, all the methyl donors are being used up trying to deal with this high homocysteine load. Those of you watching who are testing your genetics, I wanted to show this to you. Um, this is a hybrid from several people's tests. This isn't one individual. This would be a very tough case if someone did have all these SNPs. But these are the SNPs most commonly uh, associated with high homocysteine. These are the SNPs that genetically can interfere, interfere with the recycling of homocysteine. Okay. So you're looking at MTHFR and associated pathways here. We're looking at MTRR, MTR, BHNT, PEMT, and AHCY. And, I, and you can read the blog post and get a little more info on those, but these are the ones most directly responsible for high homocysteine levels. By, certainly by no means the only ones responsible, but these are the main ones. Methylation nutrients will help lower homocysteine. That is fact we're going to go over that here shortly um, I just want to review that you know brain inflammation is really what we're talking about uh, Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States and 35 years ago it didn't exist hardly at all so something's changed I'm suggesting it's a methylation problem due to all the toxins all the malnutrition and all the stress that we are under collectively and the reason we focus so much on gut health in our office and other practitioners do as well is that it creates brain inflammation so anything anytime we have a leaky gut our gut immune system makes these red molecules they go into your bloodstream your heart pumps them all over your body and they end up in the brain they create inflammation they steal your tryptophan so you can't sleep and then they make more glutamate so you're neurotoxic you don't feel good anxious restless um, you know, all kinds of symptoms, rage, depression, ringing in the ears, tingling and numbness, lots of different symptoms associated with this. So getting the gut right causes the immune system to calm down and send calming blue signals into the system, into the brain. They actually make you smarter. They increase something called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is science speak for making new synapses, making new connections. And uh, that's what we're going to promote. That's what we're, we're going to help you do that. This is the slide that just shows again from the CDC using their own data that Alzheimer's disease is the number sixth leading cause of death. And look at that curve, guys. It didn't exist back here. Low-fat diets, cholesterol is bad, butter is bad, red meat and fat is bad, and statin drugs are good. And get that out into the population as much as we can and all we do is we just destroy our brains so you know there's ways we there's ways we can age in a healthy way and that's what we're going to talk about and that's what we promote at beyondmthfr.com and certainly in my clinic um, but this just shows you that Alzheimer's disease and brain problems are a growing problem and we want to get in front of that this is just a little bit of science to kind of highlight the idea of what depression really is. And depression doesn't mean you want to listen to, you know, angry or sad music and paint in the color blue. And depression just means decreased brain activity. No more, no less. Don't overcomplicate it. That's all depression means, especially from a neurologic point of view. These are two, two MRIs showing you know, a depressed brain and, an, and a non-depressed. Well, the difference is simply the level of activation. Inflammation, like I showed you in the slide a few slides back, the gut inflammation, underpins the development of depression. It steals your tryptophan so you can't make serotonin and you can't make uh, niacin very much. Uh, it causes anxiogenic effects, which is a fancy way to say it causes anxiety, and it's neurotoxic. So this is what inflammation does. At the root of this low acting brain, the difference between this brain and this brain is the person on the left is really inflamed. And there's lots of things we can do to help that. And homocysteine, lowering homocysteine is, is a critical part of any program to lower inflammation. Um, it just helps so many things. This is a slide showing epilepsy, um, how epilepsy is related to inflammation. Again, a normal individual has more activation in their brain than an epileptic does. So we're seeing all these syndromes like ADD, ADHD, depression, anxiety, epilepsy, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, 
is a loss of brain function. Again, inflammatory and immune system molecules start seizures and promote seizures. This is what we're affecting by controlling homocysteine. I love this slide because it basically says exactly what the natural medicine world has been saying a long time. Vitamins protect the brain. It's no more complicated than that. Um, the difference between, in this study, basically the, the difference between people who had homocysteine related problems and those who didn't depended on how many antioxidants and methyl groups they had in their body. I mean, it's just that's why supplementation is so important. Getting the right ones for your body can be challenging, and that's what doctors like myself and other clinicians can help you do. Every color, every day, all the colors in these foods are antioxidants, different chemicals. And again, they're saying basically that brain damage and neurodegeneration is prevented by using antioxidants that we take in our diet and antioxidants like glutathione that we make. Um, it's always better to make glutathione inside your body than to take it in a pill because you make it in every cell of your body. So we can create situations where the body just makes all the glutathione it needs if you give it the right ingredients and you don't have to spend extra money on a glutathione supplement that may or may not be um, effective. More research. Basically, it's all about methyl groups, guys. This is why methylation is so, so powerful and so important. Um, again, folate comes from the word foliage because folate was found in green leafy vegetables. In our society, we just don't eat enough green leafy vegetables. We're all guilty of that. Um, eating all these vegetables in perfect, pristine, 100% healthy soil would probably lower the need for us to take supplements. But until that day comes, I and I hope you take the right kind of methyl support and supplements that you need to optimize you, your body and your brain. And, you know, basically, SAM, a methyl donor, or SAM precursors, folate, B12, ameliorate, fix neurotoxicity. Okay, it's great. Uh, these methyl groups really do make a difference. Um, they do protect our brain and our neurologic function. Another uh, favorite study of mine came out last year. It shows basically that B vitamins lower homocysteine and that leads to a decrease in the loss of gray matter. Well, if you lower inflammation by lowering homocysteine, you actually preserve the health and the size of the brain as we age. It's just that simple, guys. Vitamins supplements are just concentrated food. It's just getting more folate in a pill because it's hard to eat 10 pounds of lettuce. Um, eat your, all the lettuce you can and whatever you're lacking after that, then you add supplements on top. That's a winning formula. Um, so I just share this with you because just to, just to show, just to prove how efficacious and how specific methylation nutrition is to protecting your brain and helping you optimize your neurologic function. Um, if you're the type of patient who's reacting poorly to methylation vitamins, that is the subject of another series of videos called NTHFR and the stress gut connection. Uh, look for that on my website as well on the blog. I just want to show you this one more time. Keep this in your files. Cracked skin on the hands and feet. Infected toes. Poor circulation in the toes. Really low quality fats inside this person's body. And they're drying out from the extremity toward the core. That's why the bottom of the feet and the hands get dry first. You can take it to the bank. If you see this type of cracked skin on someone's feet and this type of toe pattern, they've had low circulation in their toes and low circulation in their brain for a long time, and they've also become very deficient on the essential fats that make our brain work. So these people, these individuals need to get high doses of the right kind of fish oil in their body, and when they do, they, they improve. It's really fun to be a part of that. Looking at the SNPs one more time, Homocysteine is the result of multiple factors, but the genes that mostly impact them are listed here. These are the most direct impact into the homocysteine levels in our body. It's how fast we recycle folate, how fast we recycle uh, betaine, homocysteine, methyltransferase. These are the pathways, the primary and the secondary homocysteine pathways 
that uh, sometimes when they're not working well, our homocysteine rises too high, causing lots of neurological problems. So thanks again for your time and attention. I appreciate all your questions and comments. Um, you know, this is uh, the work that we do. We help people optimize their genes so you can optimize your life. And there's more to come. So please stay tuned. And uh, thank you again for your time and attention.